Christ preached that yeah. nobody should be above forgiving another for wrongs. We should strive to love one another regardless of what they did. I think this teaching alone was a huge shock to the world. This is from Jason. Yeah, Jason, uh, I just would have to say that um, um, you're absolutely correct. It was part of Jesus' definition of love, his elevation of love as the highest commandment. And the fact is, um, in Jesus' definition of love, right, no virtue is mentioned more often with respect to love than forgiveness. So forgiveness is mentioned more often in the New Testament than any other uh, virtue. Now, if you take a look at that, why is that the case? Because for Jesus, we cannot proceed uh, without <clears throat> some kind of forgiveness. Violence begets violence, and vengeance begets vengeance. And if you don't interrupt that cycle, the violence just gets worse, and the payback gets worse, and the vengeance gets worse, <clears throat> and the payback gets worse. And of course, this cycle is so incredibly destructive. <clears throat> and Jesus says, it is you who are following the heart of my father manifest in that parable, the prodigal son. You have to stop that cycle. And so he puts no limits on it. And so, Jason, you're absolutely right. When he tells Peter to forgive his uh, brother 70 times, seven times, that's seven, which is a prime number, times 10, times seven again, which is another prime number, that's like saying just forgive an unlimited number of times. That's exactly what it means. There's no condition. Now get to the second part of your question, Jason. Is this distinct? Yes, it is distinct from what came before Jesus. It absolutely is because if you look at it, you know, Jesus even says it in Matthew's gospel, right? You have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, right? This is a so-called lex talionis, right? You have s heard it said, right, that you can have a just uh, retribution and a just punishment of people who have done something to you. But I say to you, <clears throat> love your enemy and do good for those who hate you. If somebody <clears throat> slaps you on one cheek, Turn and give them the other one as well. And so he goes through it and, and, of course, says finally at the end that the Father's love, the perfection of love, which is the perfection of the Father's love, consists in the fact that the forgiveness is unconditional, mm -hmm. it is unlimited, and it extends to the greatest enemy that we have. Mm -hmm. And that is his view of love. And you're absolutely right. There is a departure again <coughs> from the Old Testament. But notice that, you know, there, you know, it's coming towards it. The prophets are getting, you know, the idea of mercy is becoming mm -hmm. more and more pronounced in the prophets. But it's Jesus that brings it, uh, the, the idea of mercy to its unconditional end. And it's shocking. It absolutely is shocking to take away somebody's right of retribution, you know, and, and to say that the Christian should not do that. It was shocking. But it's also mm -hmm. a truth which saves the world. It's how we got a court system, right, that, that could actually look not only at the silver rule, but at, <coughs> but at the golden rule. Mm -hmm. It's a, <coughs> sorry, it's a court system that could actually get us to the point well, that's the question looking I was going to ask the you. The common good. That was the question I was going to yeah. ask you. How does that relate to the difference between yeah. maybe what we as individuals are called to be versus what rendering to Caesar might be in the sense of the court system? Yeah. Somebody might say, well, if that's the case, then uh, we can't convict anybody of a crime because we just forgive them. No. Yeah, no, it, this was the challenge that was faced, <clears throat> especially by St. Augustine in the city of God. And the reason it was faced by him, right uh, now, you know, during Augustine's time, Christianity is very popular, right, uh, throughout the whole Roman Empire. And, of course, it's just taking over the whole Roman Empire. And now we have to start reconciling the individual re uh, responsibility of the individual versus the responsibility of the state. Mm 
And, and of course, you know, Augustine is struggling mightily uh, to, to try and balance these two things. But of course, he doesn't go back on the unrestricted notion of forgiveness for the individual, but he says the state is in a different position because the state also has the public welfare and public safety and public protection of its citizens within its legitimate purview. And of course, Jesus prepares the way for that by saying, render unto Caesar what is Caesar. So what can the state do? The state can't practice unmitigated forgiveness mm -hmm. if that means letting criminals just walk on the street. You're going to have to incarcerate some really dangerous guys who are going to be repeat offenders. And of course, you really do have a right, as Augustine says, to defend yourself against an aggressive enemy that would destroy your community. That's part right. of the state's responsibility, for, from which he derives, by the way, the just war theory.